Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today, what I have for you is a video that I wanted to make on a tool that I've actually been using a lot and, and seeing be used a lot because it's not great expectations. Um, low bar for success, I know, but I don't like great expectations. A lot of people don't. And I do like soda. So soda is kind of a less rigid, more just human way of designing and embedding data quality checks in your pipelines and your workloads. Um, and just, I don't know, the, the way that you develop tests within Soda just seems a lot more natural to me. It's more like human native in terms of, you know, hey, this is what I'm trying to check for. These are the things that are important to me. And then testing those things rather than great expectations, which in my opinion is a little too abstracted and difficult to both set up and monitor versus here, it's just, hey, I wanna check if the rows are larger than 100. I wanna see, if they check the function of the max amount in each row. Um, it's really easy to build that more complex logic versus you know, great expectations or some other solutions where it might be a little bit more complex. And then also, it's super extensible. It's really easy to embed in existing workflows. So things like a Airflow pipeline, really easy to bring Soda in. But first I just wanna start, so give you an idea of what Soda is, what it's best used for, how it differentiates from other data quality tools, and then go into how you can get started using Soda, give you some simple examples that you can use to just kind of copy and paste, get started using Soda, and just get your mind percolating about how it can help you integrate data quality better into your pipelines, because it's going to be more and more important as the AI and ML uh, march continues on. And so in terms of what makes Soda different from other tools um, is that it really focuses on simplicity and automation by connecting directly to your various databases, your data warehouses, and give the ability to run those data quality checks at the data source level, rather than need to move the data from the location or duplicate it to check it, and then have these automated data quality checks because you're plugged into those source systems where you're running those data quality checks within those source systems on a regular basis or as data is loaded and can more easily address inconsistencies, errors, and any kind of anomalies really in real time. But again, without needing to pay for IO costs moving the data somewhere else or having that data have to be checked in a separate landing page before it goes into your data warehouse. Obviously you can do that if that's your desired approach, but the key thing here is that flexibility in allowing you to run those data quality checks on the data where it lives. Um, and in kind of conjunction with that, you have really, really uh, simple to define data quality checks for here in YAML files. So you can see here, and it's kind of obstructed, but very simple lists of checks you can set, and I'll go on, I'm gonna show you some more complex examples later, but you just take this YAML file where you're looking, hey, I wanna check the max passenger length, and then it all will render into a pretty nice UI uh, within Soda Cloud, um, but also just in a results file where you can see, hey, you know, this is the name of that check, this is what that check's doing, and then the actual logic of what's underneath that check, you can have several steps, but you only care about the end result. Is this data, has it been checks for pack stats, right? And so you can kind of, abstract away some of those more complex uh, individual data quality steps and have that all run as a single flow. Um, and then compounding this is it's got a really lightweight approach and that makes it easy to integrate into existing ETL processes, existing CICD processes without needing to really you know, change up your whole style or approach and make sure that your data quality is continuously monitored, validated as part of that data workflow. And then it also has the ability to handle both batch and streaming data, so it's really versatile. So if you're, you know, most organizations are gonna be doing some combination in batch and streaming. Um, and so being able to do both of those and integrate data quality checks into both of those types of pipelines, really nice. Um, and then other differentiators here is integration with, you know, a full cloud environment. So Soda Cloud, you, you saw that uh, this is what that this is uh, at the high level is the ability to have a cloud UI dedicated to data quality. This is meant to be more of a user-friendly approach than you know, just like parsing through log files or really difficult to decide, you know, hey, logs of what happened there. Um, and this also allows Soda to, by opening up the aperture to less technical people, uh, help have a more collaborative approach to data quality where teams can work together. Um, you know, if a data analyst see, can see the data quality evolving over time and alert the data engineer and say, hey, this data quality, you know, suddenly this doesn't work with my models, and I notice there's an issue with data quality um, in Soda. They can go relay that to engineer and kind of work together to figure out, hey, what is, where is the data quality uh, getting messed up? What are we missing here? Um, and then get better data to those end business use cases. 
Um, and then also emphasize ease of use because these checks are all predefined. Um, if I want to start applying this to a new pipeline, it's very easy to just you know copy and paste or add that step to that pipeline. Um, and it's also got that declarative interface and a very quick setup as you'll see here. Um, and then finally, open source. Soda is really focused on open, being open source via its plugin with Soda SQL. So that's how it interacts with those source databases. So it allows your data team to customize your data quality workflow without vendor lock-in. So again, key thing, a lot of data quality platforms are really rigid. It's you gotta have the whole all-in-one solution. It's really heavy overhead. Soda is super lightweight and cheap. You can pretty much run it yourself for pretty for very low, very low cost. Um, and so it allows you to quickly implement and scale data quality processes without needing to pay a ton upfront or introduce a lot of unnecessary complexity into your environments. So now that you have the elevator pitch on, you know, why soda is so great, why you should use it, I also want to go into how you can actually get started using it. Um, and so the first thing you need to do is pip install a couple different packages. So the first thing you're gonna need to install is pip soda install soda SQL core. Um, and this is just going to install all the core SQL libraries. You'll need to have Python 3.8 or above. Um, and we need to have the right, interesting. let's see what went wrong here. All right. So this is an issue here. So one second, let me upgrade pip. Okay, so I was apparently working from an outdated toolkit. So what you're actually gonna wanna install uh, is something like this. So pip install i from PyPyCloud, Soda.io, Soda Postgres, or Soda Snowflake, or Soda whatever database you're interested in interacting with. Um, you can see this is going to install all the dependencies. Not sure what's going on before, but here we are. So important that you guys see these kind of errors because you'll probably run into some of the same. Um, so make sure you use that install command. It's on the Soda documentation if you need to get it. Um, so it's super easy to grab there. Um, and then once we have everything installed, our next step is going to be actually, you know, setting up and interacting with Soda. So we have the installed, but we don't have anything actually running. And then the next thing we're going to need to do is actually navigate to wherever you installed Soda. So in this case, it's right here. So apt homebrew uh, lib python 3.10. Let me just move this window over a little bit so you can see it better. Um, site packages. So let's go back into that. So ls opt cd into opt here here, cd into homebrew, and then cd into lib, and then python 3.10 ls, and then cd site, it's here again, and then what we're going to do is within this file, um, we're going to create a new file, so I just wanted to find where it was. Um, and then I am going to add this config here. So here, what we're going to do is basically take our connection details that we're going to use for uh, the database we're going to save it to and save it as a YAML. So here we're just gonna call data source, my data source, localhost, uh, and, and then, so that's, I'm just running, connecting my local Airflow database, which is running on uh, port 5432. So let's actually add another field here for port. Five, four, three, two. Username, password are Postgres. It's not Castgres, Postgres. Database is Postgres, schema is public. Um, and then what we're gonna do is save this as uh, config.yaml. So here we have configuration.yaml file. So configuration.yml. Format all files and save this. So cool, now we have our configuration YAML file and then what I'm gonna do is just find within my directories where uh, everything is. So one second, pause here. So then here in our site packages folder, what we're gonna do is take that and drag it in here. So we have our config YAML file available. So here, go into documents, just created it and then take this configuration YAML file and just drag it into our site packages folder, boom. And then that will make it available for Soda to use as its actual configuration YAML file. And also I just realized you couldn't see this up here, but this is what that data source will look like is the type, host, port, username, all that information and then the schema as well. Um, so now we have our database connection defined. 
then our next step is just going to uh, be actually writing some data quality checks. So here, let's create a new text file. And here, what we're going to do is just call this orders.yaml. So let me just save this as in, or let me actually put code in here and then save it as, of course. Um, so here, orders.yaml, table name order. So selecting the table we want to execute this data quality check in, and then choosing our different data quality checks. Let me actually save this as YAML so it'll show up better. Um, so orders.yml. And boom. So now here we have all of our data quality checks we'll need. So row count, missing count, and this is what I'm talking about where it's just much more human way to define these data quality checks. You have functions like invalid percent, duplicate count, min, max. So you just don't need to do as much of the boilerplate code as you might need to with other data quality services. So that's one thing I really like about it. Um, and then we also, if you want to use Soda Cloud, you're also going to want to add this to your config file too. So here's Soda Cloud. This will allow you know whatever API key secret you have. Soda Cloud is really good for that monitoring piece. So even though you're you know taking these YAML files, connecting to the database, running those data quality checks there, you can use Soda Cloud to actually visualize the results of all of those. Um, so much much easier way to monitor and check all those over time. And that's really all you needed to get started. Um, so then the next step, and I have a video on this, is orchestrating those soda checks with Airflow with your data quality pipeline. Um, that's a whole other video, and I'll definitely take it further if, if this one gets some love. But just wanted to show you a video on getting started with soda and kind of what it kind of looks like um, so that then I can gauge, hey, do you want me to take it further? Is this a waste of my time and your time? Let me know in the comments below. Um, but above all else, have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.